Hey, Steve here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how it's never been easier to work with saved selections or channels as it is with my Pulsar black and white plugin. Now let's dive straight in just so that you can see whether this is gonna be for you or not. Now, if you're familiar with saving selections as channels, then you'll be familiar with the channels panel. So let me just come over to this image that I've already edited, look in the channels panel, and we can see we've got saved channels here for sky, trees, building left, building right, main building, etc. So if I click on each one of these, you can see the channel and what that isolates in terms of when we load it as a selection. So this is for the sky, this is the trees in the foreground. This is one building, this is a second building. This is the middle building. So creating and saving those selections as channels is one thing, but you know, how do we work with those after we've created them and saved them. Let's say we wanted to, you know, without the panel, load one of those channels as a selection and do something with it. So we would have to, you know, starting from in the layers panel, we'd have to come over to channels, press control or command, and then click on whichever channel we wanted to load. That loads it as a selection. We go back to the layers panel. We do what we want with it. If we want to, for example, combine two of these, then we can load the main building by command or control clicking on that. And then to, let's say, add building right, hold control and shift, and then click on it. And it will add that to the selection. And then we can come across back into the layers panel and say, for example, add a levels adjustment, which we can then do something with, and that affects that section. If you're not super comfortable and familiar with working in the channels panel, that's already a little bit cumbersome. So let's have a look at my Pulsar black and white plugin, the saved selections section. You might have already clocked it as you were watching this. We have those same selections that are saved as channels over here. I've got them in this little area here, appropriately titled saved selections. So we have sky, trees, building left, right, main building, etc. So from here, what we can do quite simply is just load the selection by clicking on the name of the selection. So that's arguably saving a fair amount of time just from messing around going into the channels panel to do that. But that's really just the beginning because we have these extra buttons here, which we can use to add, subtract, and intersect channels with each other so that you know, it's just removing all of that complication from doing that in the channels panel. So let me deselect and then we'll start again. So let's say we wanted to load a selection of the left building and the right building. So we click on building left, that loads it as the selection. We want to add building right, so we click the plus button next to the building right selection here. And now we have a selection that has both of those. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now, when would we want to think about using the subtract option and subtracting selections from each other? Well, let's suppose in this scenario, we have already created a selection for the sky and we've already created a selection for these trees in the foreground. And now we want to create a selection for the buildings. Let's select the entire canvas, so Command or Control A to select the whole canvas. And now we have our sky selection here, so we can subtract the sky. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now let's subtract the trees. And there we go. Let's save that as a new selection, so we can do that straight from in here. We don't have to go to the Channels panel to do that. Save Active Selection. Let's call this um, All Buildings. Okay, and now we have all buildings down here. We can load that again. We can add any kind of adjustment we want and it's gonna load that selection as a mask and now we can do what we want to it. I'm not really sure why you'd wanna turn it completely white like this, but that's just to show the effect and the benefit of what we're doing here. Now let's think about when we might want to use the intersect option. So what that means is you can take the common area between two selections that are basically overlapping and use that and create a selection from just that overlapping area. So let's say that we wanted to create a selection that was of all of the highlights in the image, but only for this main building in the middle. So the way that we can do that, I'm just gonna open up the luminosity ranges section of the plugin here, and I'm gonna create a selection for the highlights. So I'm just gonna click the one button there and we can see we've got a highlight selection has been loaded. Let's close that again and now we can save this. I'll call this H1. So that's now in our list down here, H1. So we have H1 now, that's our highlight selection. Now how do we make it so that we can have a selection that is only the highlights within the area of this middle building? Well, we can load H1 as a selection 
and then we can press this X button next to main building here and that's going to load a, a selection that is the intersection between those two selections. So I click that. Let's save this now. Save active selection, main building H, main building highlights. So now we have that in our list, MBH. So now if we look at that in the channels panel, we can see we have just the highlights for that main building there. So what that allows us to do now, if we load that, well, we can do anything we want with it. Let's add it to a curves adjustment as a mask and we can make those brighter. We can make the highlights darker. And you can see if I really push this all the way down, that looks terribly ugly, but it just goes to show that we're not affecting the shadows. You know, we're only darkening the highlights in the image in that middle area there, thanks to the layer mask, which is only allowing this to affect those highlights. So that's how you can create intersections. One other thing, I mean, obviously here, the trash can icon, you can guess what that's going to do. You can quickly delete your saved selections here. So I'll just delete that H1 and the H1 MB. But the one last button that I haven't shown you here is the one that's got these arrows. And if we hover over the button there, we can see it says replace current layer mask with this saved channel. So what does that mean? Well, let's add a curves adjustment that just randomly brightens the whole image. So we've got no mask applied there at all. This button is going to allow us to load any one of these channels or saved selections into the layer mask of the currently active selection. So if we want this to only affect the sky, we can load it with the sky saved selection or the trees building left, hang on, building left, building right, main building, building right, left-hand side, background building, which is gone now, and uh, all buildings. Now, what I've just shown here is a pretty good use of that. You know, if you just want to make an adjustment and then decide where you're going to place it using these saved selections. But where it also comes in really, really handy is if you've created a selection, say for example, this uh, building left, and then you've applied it to a lot of adjustments already. Let's say I've used this one selection to create 10 layers with that layer mask applied, but then I realize I've made a mistake in that initial selection. Well, it's gonna be a right pain going back and updating 10 masks manually to correct that. So what this allows you to do is create a new corrected version of any selection. So let's say building left, you know, if you wanted to scrap that and then make a new one for building left. All you need to do to then replace all of your old masks that used building left is click on each mask and then hit the replace button. So hopefully you can see how this is really useful and you know, really, really takes a lot of the complication out of using the channels panel to do all of this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments on YouTube. Otherwise you can click the link below to grab a copy of the plugin. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.